Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you step by step how we recreated the void from Stranger Things. So this video came off the back of a recent music video production that we put together for a very talented local artist called Rory Webley. If you wanna see the full music video, make sure to click the link in the description that will take you over to his channel. Check it out, he's got some really cool stuff. Rory's vision for this music video was that he wanted to have this sense that he's drowning, that he's underwater, that he's in this place of purgatory having just been a drowning victim. And not only that, Rory is also a massive Stranger Things fan. So we came up with the idea of using that black void with that shallow watery pool as the perfect stage to set his performance piece, which we then intercut with some underwater footage as well. So the first thing we did is we had a look at this Stranger Things setup and we really broke it down. What were the elements that went into that kind of a setup? And there were three key components. The shallow watery pool, a solid black backdrop, and soft overhead lighting. Now we tweaked the lighting a little bit for our setup to give Rory a little bit more of a traditional poppy three-point lighting look, but the other two elements remained virtually the same. If you wanna see more cool setups just like this one, make sure to hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video. So the first thing you're going to need is a large warehouse space. You need a space that's large enough to contain not only our pond, but all of our blacks, the lighting for the setup, as well as room in front for our crew and all of our cameras. We ended up using a warehouse style space here on the Gold Coast called Expressive Grounds. Now you want to pick a space that it doesn't matter too much if the floor gets a little bit wet because we are dealing with a setup that has a lot of water. So this was the perfect space for us. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the floors are swept clean. You wanna make sure that there's nothing that can puncture the bottom of our pool. So you wanna make sure there's no sticks, dirt, debris, nails, or anything like that. Now we used pond liner for this setup because we found it was the best solution to contain a large amount of water for a fairly long period of time. We tested other things such as tarpaulins and, and other plastic materials, but they didn't fully contain the water. They weren't perfectly waterproof. Whereas pond liner, although it's a little bit more expensive, is completely designed to contain water. So it ended up being the perfect solution. We went with a large four by six meter piece, which we got from a local hardware store. I would have liked it in an ideal world to have been a little bit larger, but four meters ended up being just big enough for us to get that full body reflection, which was really important for the start of the video. The next step is to create the border for our pond. Now there are lots of materials you could use. You could use wood, you could use two by four, you could use anything that's going to be a bit rigid, but we opted for pool noodles. We did this because they're soft, they're lightweight, they're large, and they're pretty inexpensive. We ended up needing, I think it was between 16 and 20 pool noodles. And what you do is you run them around the border of your pond. So what you do is you take your pond liner and then you tuck it over and back underneath your pool noodle and then you secure that pond liner in place with gaff tape or plastic tape. What the pool noodle does is it just creates that lip. It raises and holds up the edge of the pond so that no water can escape. For a little bit of extra safety, we then placed a shot bag in front of each of the pool noodles just to make sure that it doesn't move if someone trips on it or the weight of the water doesn't push it out of the way and create leaks. I'm going to include a list of everything that went into this setup at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. So now that we've got our pond set up and in place, it's time to start thinking about the backdrop. We used a series of black muslin backdrops to line the sides and back of our setup. We had two three by six meter muslin backdrops at the back and two of them at the side. Now you can use any black material, but the key is you want it to be as thick as possible so that you don't have any light leaking through. Now we used a thick 170 GSM pro grade muslin backdrop. Now to rig up our black backdrops, we used the crossbars from some heavy duty backdrop kits that we had here in the studio. Now we decided to use C stands as the primary stands because we knew that those backdrops, we wanted to get them quite high and when they inevitably get a bit wet, they're gonna be a lot heavier and they're gonna put a lot more strain on those stands. So we wanna use the strongest stands that we had available. 
Because we're gonna make this environment completely and totally black, we want it to feel like a void, you need to be aware of any ambient light spilling into the space. In the warehouse that we were shooting in, they had massive large windows lining an entire wall of the space, throwing a heap of natural daylight into our set. So what we had to do is we had to black out those windows as best we could. We used large sheets of builder's plastic, which we just gaffed directly to the windows to help cut as much of that light out as humanly possible. So now that we've got our pond and our background all in place, it's time to move on to lighting. Now because we wanted our opening shot to be quite wide, it was important that we kept light stands out of the equation. So we rigged our lights on something called a goalpost rig. Essentially what this is, is two large heavy duty stands. We used 069 combo stands, and we then used a large 18 foot piece of scaff pipe that we suspended our lights from. The goalpost rig was fantastic because not only did it keep the lights up and out of the way, but it also allowed us to keep our electrical cables suspended off the ground in case there was some kind of flooding. For this setup, our key light was the Aperture 300D, which we use with a large parabolic softbox. And then we had two 120Ds, which we used as our fill light, which also had a softbox, and our backlight, which we threw directly onto Rory. Then once all of those elements are in place, it's time to fill up the pond. Now this will take quite a bit of time, so make sure that you plan for that. And then essentially the setup is ready to go and it looks pretty cool. Now make sure you have lots of towels on standby so that people can keep their feet dry and clean when they're stepping in and out of the pond. And also so that you can contain or clean up any spillages or any leaks. Now, one thing that you do need to think about is once you're done, how are you gonna get all of that water out of the pond? The best solution for this would be a transfer pump. We did not do this, and this was the biggest mistake we made in executing this setup. We had a couple of little, little siphon pumps that really didn't do a very good job. They didn't pump the water out, out nearly at the volume or speed that we needed. So in the end of the day, we just got a bunch of crew members with a bunch of buckets and we just paled that stuff out of there. That ended up being the best solution for us. But a transfer pump would have been much better. All right, as promised, I'm now gonna put on the screen a full list of everything that went into this setup. I'm just gonna leave this up on the screen for a few seconds and you can grab a screenshot if you would like. So now that our pond is full, you are ready to shoot. And it's a pretty cool setup. We feel it worked really, really well for this video and what Rory wanted to communicate to his audience. The last thing that I wanna share with you is what to do in post once you have your footage. Now in order to get that perfectly black void-like feel, what we need to do is we need to tell DaVinci Resolve, which is the software that we used for grading, what it wants to see as black. And if you go down to the bottom left-hand corner of the color window, you'll find the black color picker. What you then do is you select the brightest part of the image that you want to tell Resolve to be perfectly solid black. And what it will do is it will neutralize any color shifts in the black areas and it will adjust the black levels to make that solid black. Then you just make your minor adjustments and you are good to go. And there you have it. That is how you recreate the void from Stranger Things. Please, I'd love to hear what you think of this setup down in the comments section below. And if there's anything else you'd like us to recreate, let us know down there as well. Thank you so much guys. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.